Experimental philosophy is an emerging field of philosophical inquiry that makes use of empirical data often gathered through surveys which probe the intuitions of ordinary people in order to inform research on philosophical questions. This use of empirical data is widely seen as opposed to a philosophical methodology that relies mainly on a priori justification, sometimes called armchair philosophy, by experimental philosophers. Experimental philosophy initially began by focusing on philosophical questions related to intentional action, the putative conflict between free will and determinism, and causal versus descriptive theories of linguistic reference. However, experimental philosophy has continued to expand to new areas of research. Disagreement about what experimental philosophy can accomplish is widespread. One claim is that the empirical data gathered by experimental philosophers can have an indirect effect on philosophical questions by allowing for a better understanding of the underlying psychological processes which lead to philosophical intuitions. Others claim that experimental philosophers are engaged in conceptual analysis, but taking advantage of the rigor of quantitative research to aid in that project. Finally, some work in experimental philosophy can be seen as undercutting the traditional methods and presuppositions of analytic philosophy. Several philosophers have offered criticisms of experimental philosophy. History Though, in early modern philosophy, natural philosophy was sometimes referred to as experimental philosophy. The field associated with the current sense of the term dates its origins around 2000 when a small number of students experimented with the idea of fusing philosophy to the experimental rigor of psychology. While the philosophical movement experimental philosophy began around 2000 though perhaps the earliest example of the approach is reported by Hewson, 1994, the use of empirical methods in philosophy far predates the emergence of the recent academic field. Current experimental philosophers claim that the movement is actually a return to the methodology used by many ancient philosophers. Further, other philosophers like David Hume, René Descartes and John Locke are often held up as early models of philosophers who appealed to empirical methodology. <laughs> Areas of research <laughs> Consciousness The questions of what consciousness is, and what conditions are necessary for conscious thought have been the topic of a long-standing philosophical debate. Experimental philosophers have approached this question by trying to get a better grasp on how exactly people ordinarily understand consciousness. For instance, work by Joshua Nob and Jesse Prinz suggests that people may have two different ways of understanding minds generally, and Justin Sitzma and Edouard Mockery have written about the proper methodology for studying folk intuitions about consciousness. Bryce Hebner, Michael Bruno, and Hagop Sarkeesian have further argued that the way Westerners understand consciousness differs systematically from the way that East Asians understand consciousness, while Adam Arico has offered some evidence for thinking that ordinary ascriptions of consciousness are sensitive to framing effects such as the presence or absence of contextual information. Some of this work has been featured in the online consciousness conference. Other experimental philosophers have approached the topic of consciousness by trying to uncover the cognitive processes that guide everyday attributions of conscious states. Adam Arico, Brian Fiala, Rob Goldberg, and Sean Nichols, for instance, propose a cognitive model of mental state attribution the agency model, whereby an entity is displaying certain relatively simple features e.g., eyes, distinctive motions, interactive behavior triggers a disposition to attribute conscious states to that entity. Additionally, Bryce Hebner has argued that ascriptions of mental states rely on two divergent strategies, one sensitive to considerations of an entity's behavior being goal-directed, the other sensitive to considerations of personhood. <laughs> Cultural diversity Following the work of Richard Nisbet, which showed that there were differences in a wide range of cognitive tasks between Westerners and East Asians, Jonathan Weinberg, Sean Nichols and Stephen Stitch compared epistemic intuitions of Western college students and East Asian college students. The students were presented with a number of cases, including some Gettier cases, and asked to judge whether a person in the case really knew some fact or merely believed it. 
They found that the East Asian subjects were more likely to judge that the subjects really knew. Later Edouard Mockery, Ron Mallon, Nichols and Stitch performed a similar experiment concerning intuitions about the reference of proper names, using cases from Saul Kripke's Naming and Necessity Again, they found significant cultural differences. Each group of authors argued that these cultural variances undermined the philosophical project of using intuitions to create theories of knowledge or reference. However, subsequent studies have consistently failed to replicate Weinberg et al.'s 2001 results for other Gettier cases. Indeed, more recent studies have actually been providing evidence for the opposite hypothesis that people from a variety of different cultures have surprisingly similar intuitions in these cases. Topic: <laughs> Determinism and moral responsibility. One area of philosophical inquiry has been concerned with whether or not a person can be morally responsible if their actions are entirely determined, e.g., by the laws of Newtonian physics. One side of the debate, the proponents of which are called incompatibilists, argue that there is no way for people to be morally responsible for immoral acts if they could not have done otherwise. The other side of the debate argues instead that people can be morally responsible for their immoral actions even when they could not have done otherwise. People who hold this view are often referred to as compatibilists. It was generally claimed that non philosophers were naturally incompatibilist, that is, they think that if you couldn't have done anything else, then you are not morally responsible for your action. Experimental philosophers have addressed this question by presenting people with hypothetical situations in which it is clear that a person's actions are completely determined. Then the person does something morally wrong, and people are asked if that person is morally responsible for what she or he did. Using this technique Nichols and Nob 2007 found that, "...people's responses to questions about moral responsibility can vary dramatically depending on the way in which the question is formulated," and argue that, "...people tend to have compatibilist intuitions when they think about the problem in a more concrete, emotional way but that they tend to have incompatibilist intuitions when they think about the problem in a more abstract, cognitive way." Topic. Epistemology Recent work in experimental epistemology has tested the apparently empirical claims of various epistemological views. For example, research on epistemic contextualism has proceeded by conducting experiments in which ordinary people are presented with vignettes that involve a knowledge ascription. Participants are then asked to report on the status of that knowledge ascription. The studies address contextualism by varying the context of the knowledge ascription for example, how important it is that the agent in the vignette has accurate knowledge. Data gathered thus far show no support for what contextualism says about ordinary use of the term knows". Other work in experimental epistemology includes, among other things, the examination of moral valence on knowledge attributions the so-called epistemic side effect effect and judgments about so-called know-how as opposed to propositional knowledge. Intentional action A prominent topic in experimental philosophy is intentional action. Work by Joshua Nob has especially been influential. The Nob effect, as it is often called, concerns an asymmetry in our judgments of whether an agent intentionally performed an action. Nob asked people to suppose that the CEO of a corporation is presented with a proposal that would, as a side effect, affect the environment. In one version of the scenario, the effect on the environment will be negative it will harm it, while in another version the effect on the environment will be positive it will help it. In both cases, the CEO opts to pursue the policy and the effect does occur the environment is harmed or helped by the policy. However, the CEO only adopts the program because he wants to raise profits, he does not care about the effect that the action will have on the environment. Although all features of the scenarios are held constant—except for whether the side effect on the environment will be positive or negative—a majority of people judge that the CEO intentionally hurt the environment in the one case, but did not intentionally help it in the other. Nob ultimately argues that the effect is a reflection of a feature of the speaker's underlying concept of intentional action. Broadly, moral considerations affect whether we judge that an action is performed intentionally. However, his exact views have changed in response to further research. 
Topic: <laughs> Predicting philosophical disagreement. Research suggests that some fundamental philosophical intuitions are related to stable individual differences in personality. Although there are notable limits, philosophical intuitions and disagreements can be predicted by heritable Big Five personality traits and their facets. Extroverts are much more likely to be compatibilists, particularly if they are high in warmth. Extroverts show larger biases and different patterns of beliefs in the Nob side effect cases. Neuroticism is related to susceptibility to manipulation style free will arguments. Emotional stability predicts who will attribute virtues to others. Openness to experience predicts non objectivist moral intuitions. The link between personality and philosophical intuitions is independent of cognitive abilities, training, education, and expertise. Similar effects have also been found cross culturally and in different languages, including German and Spanish. Because the Big Five personality traits are highly heritable, some have argued that many contemporary philosophical disputes are likely to persist through the generations. This may mean that some historical philosophical disputes are unlikely to be solved by purely rational, traditional philosophical methods and may require empirical data and experimental philosophy. Criticisms <coughs> 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 In 2006, J. David Vellman attacked experimental philosophy on the blog Left to Right, prompting a response from its defenders on Brian Leiter's blog. Andy Kopinen has argued that intuitions will not reflect the content of folk concepts unless they are intuitions of competent concept users who reflect in ideal circumstances and whose judgments reflect the semantics of their concepts rather than pragmatic considerations. Experimental philosophers are aware of these concerns, and acknowledge that they constitute a criticism. Timothy Williamson has argued that we should not construe philosophical evidence as consisting of intuitions. Other experimental philosophers have noted that experimental philosophy often fails to meet basic standards of experimental social science. A great deal of the experiments fail to include enough female participants. Analysis of experimental data is often plagued by improper use of statistics, and reliance on data mining. Holtzman argues that a number of experimental philosophers are guilty of suppressing evidence. Yet, in lumping together all people's intuitions as those of the folk, critics may be ignoring basic concerns identified by standpoint feminists. Some research in experimental philosophy is misleading because it examines averaged responses to surveys even though in almost all of the studies in experimental philosophy there have been substantial dissenting minorities. Ignoring individual differences may result in a distorted view of folk intuitions or concepts. This may lead to theoretical and strange fictions about everyday intuitions or concepts that experimental philosophy was designed to avoid akin to creating the fiction that the average human is not a man or a woman, but the average of a man and woman e.g., the average person has one ovary and one testicle. This criticism is not unique to experimental philosophy but also applies to other sciences such as psychology and chemistry, although experimental philosophers may lack the training to recognize it. Topic. Problem of reproducibility In a series of studies published in 2012 and later peer-reviewed, Hamid Saeed Sayamdost showed that some of the most famous results in experimental philosophy were not reproducible. This work gave rise to a focused attention on reproducibility in experimental philosophy. Several philosophers have carried out independent replications and to date all have confirmed Said Sayamdost's results. Some of the areas covered in this debate include the instability and malleability of philosophical intuitions, determinism and moral responsibility, cultural diversity, gender differences and socio-economic diversity. A large amount of research also focused on epistemology as Stephen Stitch argued early on that findings reported by him and co-authors suggested that long-practiced methods in philosophy had to be discarded, famously noting that in light of their findings a "...reasonable conclusion is that philosophy's 2,400-year-long infatuation with Plato's method has been a terrible mistake." Since publication of Said Sayamdost's papers, Stitch and collaborators have reversed their research direction on this question. The reason for these problems in experimental philosophy is not entirely clear. A parallel with experimental psychology is likely, however, the most recent study shows that many central findings in experimental philosophy are reproducible. 
A team attempted to replicate 40 of the most influential experimental philosophy studies and found that 70% replicated. References Further reading Bengtson, J., Moffat, M., Wright, J. C. The Folk on Knowing How. PDF. Philosophical Studies. 142 387–401. doi.10.1007 per x Buckwalter, W. Knowledge Isn't Closed on Saturday, A Study in Ordinary Language, Review of Philosophy and Psychology formerly European Review of Philosophy, Special Issue on Psychology and Experimental Philosophy ed., by Edouard Mockery, Tanya Lombroso, and Joshua Nob. 1 395–406, Link Feltz, A., Zarpentine, C. 2010. Do You Know More When It Matters Less? PDF. Philosophical Psychology. 23 5, 683–706. doi, 10.1080.09515089.2010.514572. Archived from the original PDF on 12 July 2010. Kopinen, A. 2007. The Rise and Fall of Experimental Philosophy PDF. Philosophical Explorations. 10 95–118 doi 10.1080/13 quadrillion 869 trillion 790 billion 701 million 305871 archived from the original pdf on the 5th of august 2011 nob j 2003a intentional action and side effects in ordinary language pdf analysis 63 to 190-193 doi.10.1093, Annalise, 63.3.190. Nob, J. 2003b. Intentional Action in Folk Psychology, an Experimental Investigation PDF. Philosophical Psychology, 16–309–324. doi.10.1080, 7771 Nob, J. 2004a. Intention, Intentional Action and Moral Considerations. Analysis. 64 181–187. doi.10.1093, Annalise, 64.2.181. Nob, J. 2004b. What is Experimental Philosophy? The Philosopher's Magazine, 28. Link Nob, J. 2007. Experimental Philosophy and Philosophical Significance PDF. Philosophical Explorations, 10–119–122. doi, 10.1080, 13 quadrillion 869 trillion 790 billion 701 million 305905. Nob, J. and Nichols, S. 2008. Experimental Philosophy. Oxford University Press, USA link. Nob, J. and Jesse Prinz, 2008. Intuitions about Consciousness, Experimental Studies. Phenomenology and Cognitive Science, Link Kripke, S. 1980. Naming and Necessity. Harvard University Press. Lutja, C., Rush, H., UHL, M. 2014. Experimental Ethics, Toward an Empirical Moral Philosophy. Palgrave Macmillan. Mockery, E., Mallon, R., Nichols, S., Stitch, S. 2004. Semantics, Cross-Cultural Style. Cognition. 92, B1 B12. doi, 10.1016, j.cognition.2003.10.003. May, Joshua, Sinnott Armstrong, Walter, Hull, J. G., Zimmerman, Aaron Practical Interests, Relevant Alternatives, and Knowledge Attributions, An Empirical Study. Review of Philosophy and Psychology, 1 265 273. doi 10.1007 per seconds 1316400090014 3. Nichols, S. How Psychopaths Threaten Moral Rationalism Is It Irrational to Be Amoral? The Monist, 85 285 304. 
doi 10.5840 monus 200 million 285210 nichols s 2004 after objectivity an empirical study of moral judgment philosophical psychology 17 to 5 minus 28 doi 10.1080/09515080842000202354 nichols s folds bennett t 2003 are children moral objectivists? Children's judgments about moral and response-dependent properties. Cognition. 90, b 23-32. doi, 101016 per seconds 10 4 Nichols, S., Nob, J. Moral Responsibility and Determinism, The Cognitive Science of Folk Intuitions Noose, 41 to 663 minus 685. Doi 10.1111 J 1468 to 0068 x. Archived from the original PDF on the 11th of December 2009. Sandus C 2010. The Experimental Turn and Ordinary Language. Essays in Philosophy 11 to 181 to 196. Schaefer, J. and Nob, J. 2012. Contrastive Knowledge Surveyed. Noose, Link, Link, Sitzma, J. Mockery, E. 2009. How to Study Folk Intuitions About Consciousness. PDF. Philosophical Psychology. Doi 10.1080/09515080802703653. Archived from the original PDF on the 24th of January 2009. Weinberg, J., Nichols, S., Stitch, S. 2001. Normativity and Epistemic Intuitions. Philosophical Topics, 29 429 460. doi 10,540, Phil Topics 2 1291 217. Williamson, T. 2008. The Philosophy of Philosophy. Wiley Blackwell. Spicer, F. 2009. The X Files Review of Experimental Philosophy, edited by Nob and Nichols. The Philosopher's Magazine, 44, 107. Retrieved 8 January 2009. Link. Topic external links. Experimental Philosophy at Phil Papers, edited by Wesley Buckwalter. Experimental Philosophy at the Indiana Philosophy Ontology Project The Experimental Philosophy Page The Experimental Philosophy Blog, with several prominent contemporary philosophers as contributors, as of July 2009, the Experimental Philosophy Page and blog list around 120 different contributors who are actively involved with research in experimental philosophy. Yale's Experimental Philosophy Lab EPL. Experimental Philosophy Society XPS Arizona's Experimental Philosophy Lab Indiana's Experimental Epistemology Lab Schreiner's Behavioral Philosophy Lab Bristol's Experimental Philosophy Page Buffalo's Experimental Epistemology Research Group EERG Metro Experimental Research Group MERG Experimental Ethics Lab EEL TU München Experimental Philosophical Aesthetics X Philosophy YouTube Channel Early Modern Experimental Philosophy Blog University of Otago, New Zealand